Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing the process for two different sketchbook spreads in a style that I've been really enjoying creating in lately, and that's in a sort of journal travel sketchbook style. And I want to share a little bit more about how I'm trying to work in my sketchbook lately. I'm really trying to find a connection and really find more of a personal touch to my sketchbook pages and topics. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about that as well as sharing and talking about the process that you'll be seeing. So for this first one, I'm working in my Royal Talons A5 sketchbook, which is the one that I'm using the most for my daily art challenge. And I'm going in with some Tombow brush pens. So I'm using the Tombows as the base. And then you'll see as I continue to add on more detail, I'll also be adding in some pencils. But I wanted to play around with their colorless blender here, which is the N000 shade. So you can see there's absolutely no color on the nib, but it does blend with the other colors really nicely. So I wanted to be quite subtle with my blending. You can see where I've put down like some scratchy darker marks and blended them out just to make it work with the other colours that I really put down. I used quite a lot of green shades but there was some really nice pops of pink from these flowers. And all of the pictures that I'm drawing today are referenced from my own photos and this one was drawn from some photos of wildflowers that I took on a morning walk around my neighbourhood. And although they are mostly weeds, I thought it was a really nice way to document some of the colour and really see things a little bit differently. And this all stemmed from a workshop that I took by Lucia Layfield. She runs Wild Ink Sketch. She runs quite a few workshops and I'm, I've always loved her style. I've been following her for a while now and I was really interested in the way that she captures things in her sketchbook and the way that she adds notes and... It feels like her sketchbook is a real extension of her and so I wanted to try out her workshop which was her garden workshop and I will leave a link to that down in the description below. And one of her recent Instagram projects is called Found and Noticed and it's basically the idea of noticing the little things that you wouldn't normally pay attention to. And so for me, although I do walk around my neighbourhood quite a lot, I don't often take much notice to what I'm seeing, I'm just sort of walking around. And so the idea for this project is actually to look around you and I notice all of these different colours from the weeds. And obviously weeds are often overlooked and so I thought it would be a really nice way to give them their own sketchbook spread. I obviously love drawing wildflowers and things like that. But it was surprising to me just how much colour there was. And so it's a really nice way to work. And one thing that I've been finding lately is finding more inspiration around me. Instead of going to the internet and trying to find copyright free images or just trying to find something to draw online, I've been really keen on finding inspiration in real life and around me. And going on these walks, I've been finding a lot more simply because I'm noticing more. And I think that's really interesting. And like I said at the beginning, I'm really trying to find more of a connection in my sketchbook recently. With the daily art challenge I'm obviously creating a lot, but a lot of the things I create are quite random and not necessarily connected. And I feel like it's quite hard to explain, but I just feel like I'm drawing and they're, they're very random things that don't often mean much to me. And certainly at the end of April I've been using inspiration from real life and I found a real difference in how I'm feeling about my sketchbook which I think is really interesting and I am moving towards finding that more personal connection which is what I want. So like I said instead of just going for random references on the internet I'm finding inspiration more around me from like my family's garden, from my walks, from seeing nature all around me and I think that's making a big difference and I definitely feel like that's where I want to go and continue exploring. So I have been creating this style of sketchbook spreads which kind of merge journaling with my sketchbooks. Obviously you'll know if you've been a subscriber to my channel for a long time, I do really enjoy journaling as a hobby, but I've never really thought about merging them together until I took Lucia's class. The one I created in that workshop that was most inspired by her work is this piece which was inspired by my photos of my grandma's garden 
and you can definitely see in my most recent spreads including this one and the next one I'm going to show you in this video how much it's influenced my sketchbook work now and I'm including a lot more text in my sketchbooks whereas before I might have labelled something or written the date of when I've done it I don't actually write much about the experience or a little bit more about each piece and so you'll see on this one I add a lot more text around it. I didn't do a whole amount of recording of the text but I have added on my own personal notes. I wrote down exactly what the flowers were and just talked a little bit about finding the colour around me and I really love the way that it looks. Again I really feel like it's helped me find a bit more connection with my sketchbook which is what I want and I really like the look of it. It feels like I'm putting more of me into my sketchbook and I think it will be really nice to look through in the future as well, rather than just some random drawings or flowers. So on to the next spread now. This is actually in my Strathmore Mixed Media Sketchbook. This is the 500 series that I bought in America. And for this one I'm using a mix of gouache, some colour pencils and near colours. So I really love working with gouache first. It's probably the technique that I feel most comfortable with. And I really love the whiteness of this sketchbook. I'm also using this new white gouache, which is in a really big tub. Because I go through white so much, I find that it's a much more affordable way to use it. And I really recommend that. So I will pop that down in the description as well. I'm just setting up my page and using my teacup to draw one of the circles. But for this one, again, I wanted it to be really personal and loose. And I'm using some pictures from a trip that Mitch and I took a few years ago in Wiltshire and I just wanted to document that day again. I think it's really important that you don't feel like you're behind in your sketchbook, a similar way that I feel with my journals. I don't mind if it's a really old trip that I'm documenting as long as I'm getting the memories down. So although this trip and these photos were a couple of years ago, I still have lovely memories and I've still got those photos on my computer and I wanted to draw them into my sketchbook and then again add more of my thoughts and feelings and what we did on that holiday. So I've put down some sketch lines, I drew out my panels and I've put a little bit of colour swatches at the top and this was part of a trail that we walked called the White Horse Trail in Cheryl. So there's a chalk horse on the hill and Part of this walk which spans quite a big area was a bit that we walked and I just really liked that they have such a graphic logo. This was a photo that I took on one of the walking styles and it just tied it in perfectly and I really like the graphic nature of this. Adding things like this into my sketchbook really excites me. I really love seeing the contrast of like the countryside painting that I've put on the left with this very graphic bold symbol, which also means something to me because we did do part of this walk. And definitely something that I want to include more. It kind of feels like when you're putting ephemera into a travel journal, but you're putting it into your sketchbook instead. So here I am painting in the actual white horse. You'll see again, I haven't sketched here I go straight in with paint but I have put down the panel size so I can keep it to where I want it to be. I'm going to be doing a live stream this week on my Patreon all about this sort of style of sketchbook spreads because I've been enjoying it so much and so I'm really looking forward to doing that live stream Zoom call with my patrons this week and if you did want to join us then I will pop a link down below as well. But if you're watching this after the day I put it live then all of our Patreon live streams are recorded, so you're welcome to watch the replay. If you're interested in seeing me talk through my paintings in this style and sharing a little bit more about how to lay it all out. But you can see here that I'm drawing in some daisies and these ones aren't in a panel, but I am trying to vary the greens. Obviously it's a very complicated picture and although I think it would be nice to do something like this plein air, I think it would be a lot harder and maybe it's something that I could experiment with in the future but for me it felt a little bit easier to have my paints at home and just reference some photos which I don't think is a bad thing at all. So on our walk on the way back we stumbled upon a field of cows and so although cows aren't something that I'm very comfortable with drawing I have been doing a few recently and so 
this was a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I'm really pleased with how he turned out. Because I am less confident with cows, I did go in with my pencil first rather than straight in with paint. And I think that definitely helped me get the shape down. And then again, I'm filling around it with my gouache. And then I come in with some more colored pencils to add more contrast. I'm working my way up with the colors. So I'm starting with the lighter browns and then coming in with the darker shades because it was a black cow, but I didn't want it to just be like a big blob on my page. And then again, adding on the colors alongside. I really love adding these color swatches. Again, it makes it feel more like a journal. It feels less finished. Although this piece is in my sketchbook and it is finished to quite a high standard and quality, I want it to feel very easy and I want it to feel quite laid back because I don't want it to be like super precise. And again, that's why I didn't go in with my sketching first because I can be a lot looser with just paint. And I just want it to be a bit of fun. I wanted to include the cow. I wanted to include lots of different elements that we saw on our walk. The beautiful views from the top of the hill and then like the trail that we walked. And now I'm adding in some of the information. So our memories of that walk, where we were, when it was. And overall, I have a really lovely feeling about this spread. I really enjoy adding in my journaling and I definitely think that's something I'm going to do more of. And it's been quite interesting seeing how it's influenced other sketchbook pages since I've done this, including this one and this one where I am adding in more of my typography and adding just more of my handwriting. And I do think that this has caused more connection in my sketchbook, which is a wonderful feeling. So here is the finished shots of that sketchbook spread. And I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope that it's resonated a bit with you and I hope that my chat about finding connection has made sense. I will pop all the links and everything down below, but I hope you have a lovely week and I will see you next Sunday with a new video. See you later.